UCD AFC, the worst team in the entirety of FIFA 20. The Irish outfit is a college side where it's fully just youth. It's just college kids. I mean, I've got to say that's a pretty cool college experience going and getting a degree and playing professional football. But we are going to take on a massive, massive challenge today, taking the half star team from the bottom, the pits of Irish football, all the way to European champions. Lads, if you do go on to enjoy today's rebuild, make sure you leave a like. I'm expecting it to take me a very long time. Also, we are on the push for 400,000 subscribers and still over 70% of the people watching the video right now are not subscribed. So make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below if you're new around here. If you have not had the pleasure of seeing a rebuild video in the past, here are the rules. So the main objective is to win the UEFA Champions League. Every game in the rebuild is simulated except for the Champions League final. The transfers can be as unrealistic or realistic as we like. There's a big focus on the transfer window. And finally, of course, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. There's the rules, let's get into the rebuild. So this is what our starting 11 looks like for season number one. And I mean, when our highest rated player is 58 rated, that's when you know we're in for a bit of a challenge. But in terms of transfers, we have a very limited budget. So I'm gonna be pouring everything into the Youth Academy. It worked wonders for us in the Bury rebuild the other week. So let's see if Lightning can strike twice. So we're gonna go in and hire some scouts. And as you can see, the only one I can afford is the one star, one star scout. I'm gonna actually hire three scouts because I know how hard it's gonna be for us to get good players in just off one one star scout. So at least if I have three one star scouts, we might be able to find a few all right players. And Luca Martin, the Belgian, our final scout getting signed. Already though, we have found somebody that looks all right. And when I say all right, it's because his overall is higher than the potential, like the current overall, the entire squad. 59 rated makes you a superstar. But anyways, Einar Nygaard, a Norwegian right winger, could be good. But no real surprise that we have done no transfer business here in the opening window. A new defender, Manuel Fuentes, the Ecuadorian defender, 62 rated. Again, it looks like a bit of a weapon. It's taken a while for us to find some all right players. I'm virtually gonna promote anybody that has decent potential and an all right overall into the squad. Another decent Norwegian here, Eric Gunderson. That's a cool name, 60 rated. Welcome to the Dublin side. Wanted to get a little bit of Irish flavor into the side. Eamon Callahan is joining us here, a 57 rated left back. My scouting journey ended in Norway. So I've decided to go ahead and try finding a new goalkeeper and in the third month of our expedition in New Zealand we have found Hugh Bloody Carter. This guy looks like an absolute weapon. I wonder if he's related to Dan Carter. And another player has come out of our Ecuadorian setup. It is Louis Guzman, 56 rated, nothing insane, but that potential has me excited. Eamon Stanton is a decent looking, like his potential's all right, but 61 rated, that is definitely a player we're gonna sign to our starting lineup. Unfortunately though, our Youth Academy players haven't been getting it done for us in the league. We're currently sitting dead last in the Irish League. Oh, I think that shows the enormity of the task ahead. I'm just gonna keep signing youth players though. Asubio Bello is joining us, another Ecuadorian. I am running out of money to keep launching youth scouting expeditions, so I have decided to sell our 19-year-old midfielder, Ryan, for a massive 45,000 pounds. And we have also sold Evan Osam to Bohemian for 130,000 pounds. Joshua Collins, the latest player to depart the club, headed to Beijing for 100k. So at least with those three players leaving the club, it means I can set up another youth scouting expedition for the second half of this first season. But let's just see what other young talents we can hopefully bring in. Gone on a French expedition here, Damien Albert, a right winger from France, Decent potential, decent overall, definitely signing him. And another Frenchman joining the squad, definitely not the same levels as Damien, but Baptiste Barbier looks all right. Gone to the United States of America and found this left back, Bruce Gibbs, great overall, 
not insane potential, but we see, we'll see what we can do. Finally decided to promote this guy out of our Norwegian setup, Arvid Strand, a left winger here, 62 rated, decent potential, definitely signing though. And another Norwegian in here, Harald Asan, joining the starting 11. So our youth players look as if they've welded some all right results for us here in the second half of the season, a much improved second half of the year, but we finish ninth. Nice. At the other end of the table, however, Shamrock Rovers have won the Irish League. And it is Bohemian winning the Irish Cup. Juventus have won the opening Champions League. And Manchester United take down Borussia Dortmund. But I mean, looking through the development of our players at the end of this first season, just quickly, and the players are growing quite rapidly. Even the guys that started off here, like the real life players, they're growing quite nicely. So that gives me a fair bit of hope headed into next season. But anyways, that is season number one done and dusted here with Dublin UCD. Things are looking all right. We've laid the foundations. Four more players remain in our youth academy and I am going to promote all of them to the starting side. Nils Anderson, Kiel Rasmussen, Lucas Michaels and Enrique Fuentes all joining the side. Now that we've got a good core of Youth Academy players, I'm gonna get rid of some of our real life players. We have sold Boar to Derry City for 61,000 pounds. And we have also decided to sell Danu Kinsella Bishop to Oldham Athletic for 125,000 pounds. Also the American Lucas Michaels has been loaned out for this season. Paul Doyle is headed to the Chinese League and Richie O'Farrell is headed to what I believe is the Swedish League. I'm just absolutely cleaning out the shop here. Liam Kerrigan is headed to Bohemian for 190,000 pounds. Pounds. And Jack Keeney is headed to Bristol Rovers. The players' departures don't stop coming. Evan Farrell headed to Morecambe. And Sam Byrne headed to Bury. Sean McDonald headed to Finn Harps for £95,000. Mark Dignam, also out of the club, headed to Leighton Orient for £135,000. But wait, there's more. Yo-Yo Marty, which is one of the cooler names I've seen, he's headed to the Chinese League for £200,000. And James Day is headed to Waterford FC for £65,000. Tobin also leaving the club off to the Japanese league, I believe, for £130,000. And Keane is headed to St. Pat's. All of those departures have led up to this moment so I could make this one signing. We have brought in an Irish talent back to Dublin. Adam Ida is here, headed from Norwich City. For one, 1.75 million pounds. Good to get some English, uh, Irish talent in. So there we go. In terms of pure numbers, that was a pretty batshit crazy transfer window. One player in and virtually every single real life player gone. And our side now looks completely different. But the good thing is that it is a completely improved side. The Youth Academy players working wonders. I really think... When I do long rebuilds like this one, I'm gonna make Youth Academy a core part of it because it works so well. Oh my God! Halfway through the season, we are first. We have gone from last, at this point last season, to first without a single loss. Oh my God. Continuing the player departures here in the January transfer window, McGrath is headed to Newport County for just over 100K. And the first of our Youth Academy players out of the club, Arvid Strand headed to Hull City for 1.5 mil. Hugh Torfell, who is the lowest rated player in the side, headed to Macclesfield for 76,000. And Eusebio Bello is also leaving the club off to Al Tawan in the Saudi league for just over 1 million pounds. All of those departures are so we could bring in this man here, Nathaniel Mbuku, the Frenchman, joining us here for 1.65 million pounds from Stade René, or Stade de Rems, I should say. So there we go. One player in, four players out, continue to wheel and deal here with Dublin. Are we going to win the league? I did not expect to be saying that this early, but are we going to win the league in season two? The answer is yes. We have turned around a remarkable season. We went from bottom to the top and we are Irish league champions for the first time with UCD, with Dublin. That is brilliant. Let's go. That means 
Champions League football in season three. What? We almost had our first Irish Cup, unfortunately losing to St. Pat's. I mean, that's all right. In real life, the club that I play for are called St. Pat's. So I've got a bit of love for these guys. Barcelona win at the Champions League final, but you know what? Given the fact that we're in the Champions League next season, I can't see any reason why that can't be us. And it is Arsenal coming away with the Europa League title. So that second season was nothing short of remarkable. I am flabbergasted. We have won the league and our side it's actually coming together quite nicely. Let's crack on with season three. Season three begins with yet another player departure. Harry McAvoy is headed to Sligo Rovers for 310,000 pounds. And another one of our young free agent or youth academy players, Enrique Fientes is headed to Ingolstadt in Germany for 770,000 pounds. Nils Andersen also out of the club, headed to the Danish, no, the Austrian league, I believe that is, Wolfsburger. Cool name, 1 million pounds. And we have made a transfer into the club nice and early this season. It is Lucien Aljume, just under 2 million pounds to bring the Frenchman across from Inter Milan. Look, I'm not planning on signing this guy, but I was looking through the three agents and when I saw the name Lyndon van der Sag, I don't know why. Maybe that's just my immaturity showing out, but I could not stop laughing at that. But I have decided to sign a bunch of free agents here. The first one accepting a Jamaican defender, Corey McGee. And a backup goalkeeper, a Polish goalkeeper. I'm not gonna pronunciate his name though, because I know I would butcher it. Paris Perez Sayol, a Spaniard joining the club. And a Japanese defender, Taishi Tane, also joining the club. And the final of our free agents signing on here, perhaps the best out of all of them, Johnny Bywater. That's a cool name, the Englishman signing on for free. But we've got Champions League football lads. We're in the qualifying rounds here as we take on Ajax. Not an easy opponent at all. The home leg up first. I don't know what to expect. The scoreline is going to be a 4-0 loss. Yeah, so headed into the second leg away in Amsterdam. My confidence is at an all-time low. We've got to travel away here and somehow overturn a 4-0 deficit. The scoreline is a 3-0 loss. 7-0 on aggregate. We've got a long way to go. But that is the end of the transfer window here to kick off the third season. A lot of players in, a few players out. The squad continues to improve, however. Little update on how the squad is looking. Our players all growing together. They're growing as a collective, which I love. The majority of the players now, well into the 70s. We are walking the Irish League. Top of the table, and what's that? We're 23 points clear of St. Pat's come the 1st of January. We need to make sure that we are winning the Irish League every single season from here on in. Little change up, however, I have not made any business in this January transfer window. There it is, lads. We have won the Irish League in back-to-back -back seasons. But more impressively, we have gone undefeated. That is golden. We also managed to finally get our hands on the Irish Cup, taking down Bohemian 4-1. Atletico Madrid did go on to win the Champions League this season. Chelsea won the Europa League. And here's a little look at how the squad is progressing. I mean, this Carter guy looks like he could be an absolute weapon in terms of world football. But again, the majority of the side Growing, growing, growing. You love to see it. That's the good thing about youth. They grow. But that is season number three done and dusted. Second consecutive Irish League title and back in the Champions League for the fourth season. I have decided to part ways with the American defender Bruce Gibbs off to Osaka in the Japanese league for 1.5 million pounds. And the Spanish youngster Perez Sayol has been loaned out to Nuremberg for the next season. Really getting rid of a lot of our youngsters so that I can bring in some high quality talent to help us push in the Champions League. But Keller Asmussen is headed to Guangzhou Evergrande in the Chinese League for 1.4 mil. And Tom Murphy also out of the club, this time for 90,000 pounds. I have decided to upgrade at the right back spot, Luke Matheson, one of the most talked about English young players. He killed it 
I remember against Man United in the Carabao Cup, I think it was, or was it the FA Cup? Regardless though, the young Englishman signing across from Rochdale for 3.5 mil. But here we go, back in the Champions League qualifiers. It's not Ajax this season, thankfully, but Rosenborg are still quite a good side. So, the first leg, the scoreline is a 2-1 win. Let's go. So we're actually in an all right position to get through to the second stage of qualifying. Let's not choke it at the home leg here. 2-1 up and the scoreline is going to be a win for us. Another 2-1 and we're into the next round of qualifying. Okay, this is where it gets tough. Celtic are our next opponent here in qualification. The first leg is crucial at home. Keep a clean sheet and it's a 1-0 loss. So our backs are against the wall and if we want to get to the group stages here, we're going to have to put in a shift. We are 1-0 down as we head to Celtic Park. Not an easy place to travel at all. For the second leg, the score lines are 2. We go through. 2-0. We go through, we're in the group stages, what? We have decided to loan out Louis Guzman, however, for the next year to Tigres. And there we go, that is the, the transfer window done here. Nothing insane, but still some good pickups. But the good thing is that the squad continues to grow. Carter, 81 rated, he's carrying us along with Nygaard, uh, Ida, all these players carrying us for sure. We have been absolutely shafted with our Champions League group. We had to go through Celtic and Rosenborg to get through to this point. And now we're versing Man City, Leipzig, and Napoli. We're gonna get destroyed. Hello? Yeah, triple zero, 911. I'd like to report a murder. The victim? Me. So things didn't go to plan in the Champions League for us, but we are just destroying the league right now. Not a single loss or a draw, and only three goals conceded. Can we go two years in a row? without a single loss in the Irish League. We have some funds to play around with because Damien Albert has been sold to Burnley for 26.5 million pounds. Oh my God. But we have decided to loan out the Japanese defender Taishi Kani to Mitterland in the Danish League. And we have decided to make an upgrade here at the left wing spot, Antonio Marin, the Croatian winger, signing here from Dinamo Zagreb for 15.9 mil. Thank you release clauses. It is an absolute bargain here. We sign Angel Gomes from Manchester United after the Red Devils placed a 4.3 million pound release clause on a player valued at 13 million pounds. So I am bloody stoked with that transfer window. Marin and Gomes into the club, Albert out of it. Surely we go undefeated. That is two successive seasons where we have not lost a single game with Dublin. That is fantastic. And we have walked the Irish League Cup 6-0 over Bohemian. What? Inter Milan did go on to win the Champions League and it is AC Milan that's stopping Arsenal from winning another Europa League title. We are just absolutely the kings of Irish football right now. Our squad is coming together beautifully, but we need to make more of a push in the Champions League. It's time to take our squad to the next level. Nathaniel Mbuku leaving the club here, headed to Parma for 17 mil. And Lucas Michaels comes back from Bradford City and now moves to Cardiff City on loan. There it is. What a massive addition to our midfield. Ricky Puig has signed here. Now, ever since I signed Gomes last year, I was like, all right, let's see if there's any crazy release clauses out there as well. Barcelona have a 12 million release clause on this guy, which I was more than happy to activate. But here we go back in familiar territory. The Champions League qualifiers this time headed to Greece against Athens. The first leg is going to be a 3-1 win. Let's go. We're without Puig for the second leg at home here, but we do have a 3-1 advantage. Are we through to the next round of qualifying? Yes, we are. 2-0, 5-1 on aggregate. Again, Louis Guzman has great potential, so I want to make sure that we can harness that. He's on loan to Parma for the next year. It is time for the second round of qualifying, and not too bad of an opponent, to be honest. Start Bucharest, I believe that is. Let's see 
How we go against the Romanian outfit. It's a 2-1 win. Time for the second leg here. We are in the advantage position headed into the second leg. And we are through once again to the group stages. 3-1 on aggregate. Let's go. But there we go. A very successful transfer window. The squad continues to improve. Let's go check out the squad and then we'll check out our Champions League group for the second year in a row. I mean, look at that. Carter is coming into his own now. I've received some offers for him, but I want to see how good I can make this guy. I mean, given the fact that I don't think we've got a Champions League run in us for another four or five seasons, Carter could honestly get to a 99 rating. Oh, bloody... We're not getting any let up, are we, with our groups? PSG, Juve, and Moscow. We'll probably go and lose every single game again this season. Okay. That's not the worst thing in the world, to be honest. We finished third there. We are on nine points, but we haven't been destroyed, which gives me a little bit of hope moving forward. And I mean, we are in the Europa League knockout rounds, so I'll be interested to see if we can go on a little run there. Things are going to plan though in the Scottish or in the Irish League, I should say. Still, not a single loss for two and a half years. Oh my God, lads. I have flipped the switch and our side is now about to be mental. Our midfield is pretty much sorted. Frankie de Jong, one of my favorite players at the moment, is going to be joining us at Dublin in season number six on a pre-contract deal. I don't do them often, but I had to do it here. Frankie de Jong, oh my god, I'm so excited to have him. I have decided to part ways though with one of our Irish products. It is Callahan headed to Salzburg for a decent fee of 22.7 mil. And Harul Hassan also leaving the club, headed to Union Berlin for 18.8 mil. Those two departures have meant we can make a big move at left back role. Luca Pellegrini signing here from Monaco for 35.6 mil. What a transfer window it was. Pellegrini into the side now, but De Jong, Frankie bloody De Jong in next season is going to make us a decent side. Three years in a row, we have gone without a single loss in Irish football. And honestly, I can't see this streak ending anytime soon. That is another Irish league title here with Dundalk. With Dublin, I should say. And it is another Irish league cup. Liverpool have taken down Borussia Dortmund to win the Champions League. And we couldn't win the Europa League. Manchester United got that privilege. And I mean, just quickly showing you guys some of the actual stats on the field. I wanted to see who was dominating for us this season and it's clear to see Adam Ida getting 43 bloody goals has dominated. That is season five done and dusted. Frankie De Jong coming in next season surely is going to give us a little bit more credibility. Very keen to see if we can actually make it out of the bloody group of the Champions League with Frankie. There it is the man himself Frankie De Jong Finally, a Dublin man signing on a free deal. Oh my God. I think it's time we upgraded at the right back role as well. However, Luke Matheson, 10.3 million pounds to Leganes. It's time for our favorite part of the season, Champions League qualification time. We're taking on Midland and the scoreline after the first leg is a 4-0 win in our favor. I also have decided to sell our French midfielder Uzume to Leganes as well. 30 million pounds for him. Second leg of qualification here. Are we going to get through to the second round? Uh, yes, we are. One nil over Midland. A massive upgrade at the right back spot. It is Diogo Dalot coming across from Manchester City, not United, City, for 48.3 mil. All right, so the second round of qualification, trying to get back to the group stages here, taking on Salzburg, and after the first leg, it's a 5-1 win. Bloody hell. Second leg time, surely we're gonna get ourselves through to the group stages once again. Uh, yes, we have 2-0 taking down Salzburg. And there we go, definitely focusing on quality over quantity. The lot into the club, Matheson and Arjume out of it. But let's go see how things are shaping up. I think this season, well, I thought this season we'd be able to get out of the group stages, but look at that group. Arsenal, Barcelona, and Marseille. 
We're going to get destroyed. So, squad numbers are starting to get a little bit scarce at the moment. So, I've decided to start up another youth academy so that once we are in a spot for a Champions League contention in like three or four seasons, we can turn these players into decent reserves. Philip Ennis, the Irishman, joining us here. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. All right. We are through to the Champions League knockout rounds for the first time. Only just getting through. I think we only got through because, I mean, it must have been head-to-head -head because we had, yeah, we were virtually the same with Arsenal, but I don't care. Ourselves and Barca are through to the knockout rounds. But it's a massive challenge for us in the round of 16 as we're versing Chelsea. Again, though, dominating the Irish League. Can we make it another season without a loss? No business done in this January transfer window, however. I'm focused on using the money that I have to build out the next core of Dublin Youth Academy players. This is going to be a real big test to see what we're actually made of here. Taking on Chelsea in the round of 16. The first leg is at home, so I really want to make sure I keep a clean sheet. And the scoreline is going to be a 4-2 win. Are you kidding me? 4-2? They've scored two goals, but we're 4-2. Wow. So we are 4-2 up, headed into the second leg here at Stamford Bridge. The thing that makes me a little bit worried is the two away goals they have. If Chelsea go and win this game 2-0, for example, then they'll go through an away goals rule. But we're going to simulate it, and the scoreline is a 2-0 win for us. Oh my god. We're through to the quarterfinals here. 6-2 on aggregate. We actually destroyed Chelsea. Gonna sign some more Youth Academy players here, however. Ronan Brennan, another Irishman, joining the side. And Cristobal Correa. This guy looks like an absolute weapon. The Chilean signing here. Another Chilean joining the reserves. Ivan Ojeda. 54 rated, decent potential though, which makes me interested. We are versing last season, I believe, Europa League champions though in the quarterfinals here. It is AC Milan versus Dublin. So here we go. The first leg is away at the San Siro here. Looking to get some away goals to our name. We're going to simulate it. And the scoreline after the first leg is a 2-1 win. What? We're actually got a good side here. What? Two away goals. We are in pole position heading into the second leg. I don't know how we've made it this far. But we need to hold on. The scoreline after the second leg against AC Milan is another 2-1 win. We're into the semis. Oh my god. It is Manchester United. No, Man United are the ones that won the Europa League last year, aren't they? So now we're versing last year's Europa League champions. We've got a pretty mediocre side. Surely Man United are about to destroy us. All right, we are at home for the first leg here against Manchester United. Need to keep a clean sheet. <sighs> Come on, lads. De Jong, I need you to help. Carter, I need you to keep a clean sheet. The scoreline after the first leg is a 2-1 win. We've got the lead. Marin and Gomes score. They have an away goal through Benton Kerr. But we are 2-1 up. Lads, if we win... We go through to the Champions League final. If we draw, we go through to the Champions League final. The ball is in our court as we head to Old Trafford. The scoreline. We're headed to the Champions League final with this squad. I mean, it's a good squad in certain areas. But this squad is in the Champions League final. How? In the Champions League final, we are versing Manchester City. This is going to be interesting. Taking a look around the other tournaments, however, Leipzig take down Tottenham to win the Europa League. And we have gone another season without a single loss. We only conceded three goals for the entirety of the Irish League season. That is unreal. And it is yet another Irish Cup to add to our trophy cabinet. But lads, here's a look at our squad report headed into the Champions League final. I don't think I've ever made it into a Champions League final with this mediocre of a side. Yes, players like Carter, players like the uh, Danish guy Nygaard are just absolutely insane. But as a package, we definitely aren't a contending side in my opinion. I thought we were still like another three seasons away from even getting to the final, but we're the underdogs. It'll be one hell of a story. Let's see how we go.
Irish underdogs and the English juggernaut. Who is leaving tonight a European champion? Pass the ball around here nice and early. I'm watching that run there from Ida. Good run. I'm watching you in the middle, Gomes. Nice lay it off. Touch. Shot. Oh, just over the crossbar. What a start to the Champions League final that would have been. An early warning shot there for Man City. Man City are on the attack as well, though. Foden going. Can't let them get a good ball in. No, we're going to clear it better. Good save, Carter. Don't let them get the follow-up. Clear that one away, Gunderson. Come on, play that from the back here. I see that run down the right wing there from Nygaard. Our Danish weapon, or our Norwegian weapon, I should say, going through to Ida. Ida's one on with Edison. Ida puts us in the lead. The Irishman himself is going to fire Dublin into the lead early here in the Champions League final. What a brilliant counter-attack it was, and what a tidy finish. The dream is alive. Come on, an early goal here in the second half would be great. Great run there from Frankie Dion. Frankie Dion, touch. One on one, near post. He's done it. Frankie Dion has doubled our advantage here. We're 2 0 up against Man City. There is still so long to go in the final, but what a dream it is so far. Man City are toying with us here. We got in the block, but they've put that one in the back line there. Punched away. Come on, let's get a counter-attack going. No, they've picked our pocket. Defend, 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 defend. They go through. No. Oh. Still 15 minutes to go as well. You can go run and celebrate all you'd like, mate. Please, waste time. Go to the corner flag. Let's watch all the replays and wind down the clock as much as possible. But that is a soft goal to concede. Man City are pushing forward so much here. They've changed. I can just feel the momentum in this game changing. I hate when FIFA does that. They go through. They take the shot. Carter holds on to it. Come on, lads. We need to maintain possession here and hopefully find ourselves an opportunity to put the icing on the bloody cake. The lot. Beautiful ball to Gomes. Come on, Gomes. Look for an option. I see you making the run in the middle. Puig. We're going to have the shot, though. Safe follow-up is nowhere to be seen. But there it is, lads. The referee blows the full-time whistle. We have done it. With UCD, AFC, the worst team in FIFA, Champions League winners, and it only took us six seasons. I thought this was going to be like a 12, 13 season adventure, but that shows just how good youth academies are. I'm going to be implementing them so much more in rebuilds, but lads, if you enjoyed this monumental rebuild, make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new around here, but I will let you savor these title celebrations. It has been Jared HD here. I'm out. Peace.